And I'm hoping that now we should be getting the cotton over there this way. Yes! That's beautiful. Look at that. Eight units of cotton. Flying all the way over to Cotchfeld. What in the world has happened here? Alright everybody, hello and welcome back to another episode on Rise of Industry with me, Spacefish, and welcome back to our beautiful, huge industrial empire, where we are still, after multiple episodes, caught up with fixing what the AI has left us after we have taken over the first AI empire in our playthrough. Uh, we left off here in the last episode actually uh, starting to produce a little bit more light fiber because we did discover that we were able to sell more and just had surplus production. And uh, today we are going to be looking right back into this whole cluster over here. So we will see where we really have just potential to sell more things today. And we'll make sure to maximize our production there, because to be honest, everything around this whole clothing topic is actually quite, quite uh, lucrative for us in the end. So we do want to make sure to use every single bit of opportunity right there. And then based on that, we can also, of course, see to the fact that over here we are using everything we produce as efficiently as possible, maybe even... Uh, increasing the sizes of some of those fields to make sure that we do have enough inflow. And then once that is done, we can go and look at all the rest of the things. I mean, of course, we do have like the cows, the the wheat, the, the um, chicken, you know, uh, stuff like that, which is just a little side business where we're not really having a secondary production as of now. So we'll be looking at that as well then after the fact but for now for today we will be focusing on the task at hand right here now uh currently uh, let's let's have a quick look at what we are doing with all these so these are our manually set destinations and as you can see we're selling these uh work clothes or whatever that is supposed to be yes we're selling the work clothes we're actually just uh selling summer clothes as well it seems we're of course, okay, so we're just basically selling all the overheads. I'm quite sure that is something we actually uh, defined ourselves that we just want to go and, and send whatever overheads we have. In fact, this is, no, this is efficiently designed because as you can see, for all the intermediate products, we're keeping a minimum amount to make sure that we're feeding all the um, last steps of the production. <clears throat> and then for these, we're just selling everything because of course we're not making anything out of these goods. Now, uh, looking over here at the clothing store, this is where I want to start today's journey. Now, uh, what we did last time, uh, if you remember, you uh, we had a little look here and we saw that we could sell 9 per 15 days. We weren't really generating overheads of 9 per 15 days, so we just ended up setting up some more textile factories so we would get more overheads and we could just sell off more of that. Now, what we also have here is light fabric, and we would be able to sell three units every 15 days, and we are going to start by looking into that. Now, light fabric, how much are we making? It seems that we're making four units every 15 days. Well, you can see, well actually, no, I'm li I, I lied. We're making four units every 30 days, so we're making two units every 15 days. And then out of those two units, oh, um, that's... Hmm. It's an interesting frequency that we now somehow need to break this down to. Uh, I guess these two are... No, those two are the... In, no. These two are the inputs. Okay, so the light fabric we're not using on any of the work clothes related stuff. We're just using it here for the summer cloaks. Which makes sense. I guess you don't want light fabric, but heavy fabric in your work clothes. Because, you know, well, they're meant to last. It doesn't matter really how... Um, Oh, how much air they let through, how, how light they are, how how little they weigh, how, how um, airy they... You get the point. Anyways, so um, we're using here four units of light fabric every 45 days. That is a weird frequency now to align to. One of these in 45 days would be uh, making three... Yes... So we're making six here, so we're kind of 
Dang. So we've got an overhead of uh, we? two every forty-five days is the over. Okay, maybe before we actually look into that, we can look into um, if we actually fulfill the need of summer clothes entirely, right? Because otherwise, you know, it's like the circle just keeps going. Okay, summer clothes first, because if we, of course, need more summer clothes production facilities, then we need more light fabric again, which means that in turn we need all the other stuff, more of that, and then we... It's, it's gonna be a bit of a work. Uh, setting all this up, not gonna lie. Okay, so summer clothes first. We are making four units every 45 days, which means that's over 15 days. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, this is like. Um, wait, demand would be six. We're making four. So we can just set up one extra textile factory. That's the, the baseline. Okay. We want an extra textile factory for... Can we have a notebook here, maybe? Is there a notebook in this game? That would actually be handy at this point. Not gonna lie. I don't think there is, unfortunately. Tool, state, market, overview, recipe book, overview. Okay. We'll just have to, to keep mental notes in our heads, right? And if I forget about something, go scream at me down below in the comments. Because probably at some point I will. Okay, so we want one extra textile factory for summer clothes in order to make sure that we sell as many summer clothes as we potentially can. For the purpose, we will need to have six units of light fabric every 45 days, which to my knowledge, we should have. And we do. We also need the same amount of dye, which we need to check, because the dye also then goes into uh, here? No? Does it actually just go into this? That's interesting. So for the heavy fabric, we don't seem to require dye, we just use fibers. And then for the light fabric, we do use the dye. Okay, so we would need six units every 45 days of dye. Why are we making that many? We're making six units every 15 days. I mean, maybe we also upscaled something in the past already. Maybe the eye just did some crazy thing. This doesn't require dye, right? No. Let me just, uh, where's my warehouse? We've got outgoing products. Textile factory six. Yes, yeah, so it's this kind of stuff. Nine, I'm guessing it's that one. It is. We've got 11. Oh, these used dyes. Wait. Ah, so these used dye and those. Okay, that makes sense. So, um, we would require then six units every 45 days here. And we would require one unit per light fabric every 30 days. So six units every 45 days, first and foremost, means two units every 15 days of dye, right? And then we have two of these, which means another unit every 15 days, because we need three. No, we need two and 30, so it's one and 15, so it's... Uh, am I still on track? Yeah, we need three units of dye every 15 days, all in all. Um, your heads are probably smoking as much as mine is. We need three units every 15 days. We're making a ton more. Okay, so that's fine. As long as we have the berries, which is then again the question. Um, if we do actually get all the berries, for the berries we would require two for six uh, units of berries every 15 days. The berries should be coming. Oh, the berries are coming from down there, aren't they? <laughs> Having a little bit of a <laughs> rough time here right now. Um, yes, so this is just surplus sales and that is what we actually bring over six units every 15 days is what we said and we are producing it's not six units every 15 days it's six units every 30 days oh no that's a per field 
Okay, so it's 6, it's 12, it's 18 divided by 2, we're making 9, so we can actually even be getting a little bit more berries if we want to, and we will probably want to at some point. Okay, so, um, bottom line, the message is we do have enough dye, the message is we also do have enough light fabric at this point in time, so what we're going to start doing is we're going to be building one textile factory for some summer clothes, which we will just plunk down right there. And uh, let me go and say that we're going to make summer clothes here. Thank you very much. Uh, everything else should be somehow managed by auto destinations, I'm hoping. Let's double check that that is the case. So that is Textile Factory 16. Which gets its dye now, um, which gets the light fabric now. And then, well, we should have incoming products from Textile Factory 16, which is going to be our summer clothes. Okay. Um, that should hopefully get going and, and all work out for us. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah. So, that that's a start. <laughs> that's a start. Okay. So, now we are making the exact amount of, l not light fabric, of summer clothes that we can sell in this clothing store. But then we also have the topic of the connected products, dye and light fabric, which we can likely sell more of. And then, you know, after all that, we have the same whole game uh, all over here again. So, you know, and then we come back to the light fabric, where if you remember in the last episode, well, to the fibers, sorry, where if you remember in the last episode, we built more because we were able to sell more here, but now we're also going to be using more again for the production. So we should have always just come from the highest level product on downwards, not from the lowest level product upwards, which was a little bit of a oversight in the first place, but... We'll get there. We'll get there. I promise. So, um, next thing that we will be looking at, I think, is going to be the light fabric. Because now, as we said, we are using all the light fabric for our summer clothes. In fact, I am a little bit wondering, because it appears these guys here are out of input. Which is a little bit worrying. That aside, the fact that they don't seem to be receiving any sort of... Um, like backup stock, you know, so they can just produce the next thing right away. Which I'm a little bit wondering about. Is there any way I can set that? Hmm... Oh, this, right? Request enough to start production. Yes, yes, yes. I think we had that already at some point earlier in the playthrough, but we should actually make sure to go and set that. Uh, we're always going to want to request enough for two cycles. That should be fine. Um, then at least we do have some little bit of a overhang, but... Sorry, let me just close that all so we make sure to set that in all of these. Because if we don't... Then basically what happens, as you were able to see there, is the factory produces for a cycle, then it doesn't have any stock, then the warehouse starts distributing stock, all the meanwhile the factory waits, and then only, only then, after everything has distributed, does the factory start working again. Which is really just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So we're going to go and always request two cycles. Uh, something pro we should probably actually control for all of our factories because I'm quite sure that it's not set properly in a lot of places. But we're not going to do that now because otherwise we're going to totally uh, lose the track of what we were doing. So, um, that should be good. Uh, I mean, I know some of these have shorter and longer production terms and for some it would maybe even make sense to go up to three. But I don't want to overcomplicate things now. Um, let's go and... It would be nice to have a close all button, wouldn't it? Uh, trucks dispatch reduced by... Oh, we want that. 34% less truck dispatch cost. That's very worth it. I mean, let's double check what we have here in logistics cost. We've got 755,000 
a month in upkeep. Sure, a lot of that is, you know, the trucks actually traveling, but even just dispatching them is a good chunk of change. I don't remember the exact figures. It's been a while, but um, yeah, I can assure you <laughs> that this is going to be worth it for us. So we're going to be bidding on, bidding on it. This is going to be a bit of a bidding war, I can imagine. Unless part of corporations are going to let me have it. Really? They're just going to let us have it. Okay, we're just saving 34% on that for 150k for all of 18 months. I mean, it is like a no-brainer right there. Um, going to be making a lot more profit thanks to that. So very lovely. We're at 15 million bucks, by the way. That's crazy. We're making so much money. Um, how much is that? Okay, I mean, they're worth 81 million, so, but still, we are making a lot of money right now. Uh, what I want to look at very briefly, though, is whether this actually gets us working a little more efficiently again. Why are all my light fabric places not producing properly? It does appear that we're low on cotton, yes. Why are we low on cotton, then? Is it due to... Let's do this way out. It's being freaking overloaded to heck and back again. We had that topic in an episode or two ago that this is just a little bit too crazy, to be honest. And, I mean, as you can see, it continues being a little bit too crazy. Um... I mean, there's just going to be bazillions of trucks backed up in that darn thing. Hey, 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 hey. We've got like tons of cotton in here, we're just not getting it out, which is a big issue. There's also a contract to deliver mutton to Banzenweiler, wherever Banzenweiler was again. Oh, all the way over there. I don't think we're taking that contract. It's going to be very unprofitable to go all the way across the map just for that. Um, my cause of concern has, uh, well, a reason for concern, my, my core of concern, well, whatever you want to call it, has shifted a little bit, though, to this warehouse, because this is not sustainable. We need to do something about it. And I do feel that the something is going to be a uh, train. The issue with that being we just don't really have space but what we're probably just going to do is we're going to tear down the orchard and maybe the crop farm and then just place it in here and route the train like that yes i mean there's just you know there's there's no attached production to these two farms you know it's not like we're losing much of anything getting rid of them and we really want a train yeah, okay. Uh, let's do that for a second. So, focus has shifted very quickly. What do I say? But, um, uh, as you can probably tell, this is a little bit more important um, even than the rest of things. So, we will be looking at this now. Um, train lines actually go this way. Okay, that's kind of the farthest up we can place those. We will be connecting that, of course, and, uh, well, let's see, maybe we can squeeze things through there. We will first and foremost go and set up a train station down here, too. I know we could technically do Zeppelins, too, so we wouldn't have to do the train lines, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know Zeppelins, it's not like they are really um, cheap <laughs> by any means. Yet, at the same time, um, trains will actually save us money. So, I don't think there's really much debate to be had over this decision. I will reroute this road so that we can go and uh, put that train station right there. Cool. Uh, we need to go back in here then. And... Uh, I think this is actually the way we need to place things, right? It appears that the train line is going that way indeed. I hope this works. I'm a little concerned that I may have clo uh, placed it a bit too close to the, cli uh, to the cliffs and we aren't going to really be able to route the tracks well. 
Yep, I did. Um, can I technically terraform this? I think so, right? Where's terraform in here? Yeah, uh, ooh, hello? Ah, interesting mechanic there. This is where we want to go. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, exactly. Perfect. That should be fine. That should be good. Then we're just going to start um, pulling this out. Yes. Cool. So now the question is going to be, can we go and squeeze those tracks here? Yeah, we can squeeze them through there. So we don't need to go get rid of the potato farm as well. We can keep that running for the time being at least. Just make things work like that. I will go and bring this thing up a little bit. Oh, oh no, it's fine. Um, I'll just bring things across. That's pretty good. Let that run to there. Then we can just connect things up like that. Cool. And that is that uh, set up. Now what we do need to do, if you'll remember, is we need to switch priority on all the destination stuff. Um, not out from this warehouse necessarily, because, well, evidently, Train tracks are going a different way. Actually, yeah, the issue is we can't really set up. Do we need one railway st station per? I think so, right? Oh, maybe not. Could we have a say? Okay, that's a question for down below in the comments. I have set this up that way now. Could I technically build a railway station over at Warehouse 7 here as well, and then, you know, using the same railway station service two warehouses with a little off split like this in the railway? Please let me know down below in the comments. Would love to hear about that. Uh, you haven't really tried that yet, but I would really love if that works, because of course then we can save ourselves even more money. Um, just with logistics uh, at the end of the day, and also save our streets a little bit of load from all those trucks driving on them. Uh, what we're definitely doing though is of course the destinations here which are going to Warehouse 2 which is going to be uh, the cotton and I think that's actually it right? Yes because the other thing is going to be the berries of which I hope we have some. Yes we do. So we have the berries, we have the dye, we just don't have the cotton and I'm hoping that now we should be getting the cotton over there this way. Yes! That's beautiful. Look at that. Eight units of cotton. Flying all the way over to Cotchfield. What in the world has happened here? I don't quite know. That is not supposed to look like that. I can assure you. I uh, misspilled that. Oh, but the train did actually switch the rail it was driving on somehow so I mean it seems that this is possible and look at that there's a ooh, yeah he, well he's driving on the previous rail but there's multiple trains now just going over which is beautiful so at least we're saving ourselves the cotton delivery but please let me know if I can just put multiple trains on the rail like this and they can kind of just find their own way around actually we could just try it to be honest well, I like, because this could, honestly, I mean, this is a lot bigger than even just optimizing the production now, because honestly, I mean, there's so much for us to gain in terms of production, uh, well, in, in terms of cost here. This train, of course, here being on the rail is a little annoying with me. Well, we'll get that sorted. And there's the next one. Another eight cotton just yeeting out all the way over there. And we'll have this back up and running in no time, I hope. That should be cool. It should be lovely, and there's the train going back. Um, so, I think um, we will leave it at that, and with that question, 
I hope that some of you do uh, do know about how this stuff works with the trains. If so, please let me know down below in the comments. We'd really love so uh, love to hear from you. Um, if I don't hear from anyone in the comments, I think we'll just give it a try next episode. Set up a, a little railway station right here for Warehouse 7, and then we'll just, you know, be splitting this off, sending the trains over with the products to Warehouse 7, and we will just be splitting off of here as well, sending over trains to Warehouse 7 for all the other products, because uh, I think we can save ourselves a little bit of money there, and also, you know, save ourselves even more from this logistical nightmare, because I think that this warehouse pretty much needs to spend all of its truck logistics capacity on servicing everything around it, so if we can move everything else to the train, saving a lot of money in the process, and actually ensuring that these logistics work, that would be the dream. That would be a dream come true, so I really hope that we can make that work. We'll be looking at that either way in the next episode, and what we also will be looking at then is uh, creating more fa uh, light fabric factories, creating more factories for dye, and uh, then we will be looking at, well, top to bottom, again, work clothes, uh, scaling up our capacity right there, so work clothes, heavy fabric, and once all that is done, we'll be looking at light fabric once more, and then we should finally be at a place where all of this is nicely sorted for us. So, I think that's the plan right there. Should be fun, should be great. Hopefully that works out nicely for us, and hopefully you can make logistics work a whole lot better for a whole lot less in the game this way. For today, though, this has been it. I hope you all very much enjoyed the episode. As usual, of course, if you did, please make sure to go ahead and smash that like button right down below. And if you're new around here and have not done so just yet, please also make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down below, as well as the bell icon right next to it in order to stay up to date on all the future upcoming episodes. With all that stuff, out of the way though, as usual everybody, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll catch you in the next episode very, very soon. Ciao.